Do you ever wish you could have a life do-over, similar to a makeover or a house renovation? A chance to try something again with a different result? Try Again with Monique is a place where I will give you my take and also hear from you regarding the questions and challenges we all face in life. You will either be inspired to try life again, over and over again, or make some really good lemonade from those sour lemons. Either way, I got you. If at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique. In the last two episodes, I talked about learning to be content and operating as a human being versus a human doing. Please go back and listen to episodes 14 and 15 if you haven't already done so. I promise they will be worth your time. Today, I want to go in a slightly different direction topically. Chronological age versus mental or emotional age. Are they the same? And if not, what is the difference between the three? Simply put, chronological age refers to the actual amount of time a person has spent on earth. Mental age refers to the mental ability of a person, your capabilities and your learning quotient. Emotional age is how well you can understand and manage or control your emotions. What I want to specifically talk about today is how a person can be one age chronologically, but an entirely different age mentally or emotionally. You can, for example, be 35 years old chronologically, but 15 years old mentally or emotionally. You may have been on this earth 35 years, but you think and behave like a 15 year old. How old, my question for you is, and and for myself, is how old would you be if you didn't know how old you are? How old would you be if you didn't know how old you are? By that I mean, if certain life events hadn't happened to you, if you hadn't gotten stuck in time or in your trauma, if you had done the work of getting help so you could mature and develop over time, would your mental and emotional age match your chronological age? There's a song lyric, act your age and not your shoe size. This really illustrates the overall point I'm trying to make. Have you ever known an adult who has tantrums like a toddler? Or one who, you know, never embraces adulting or the responsibilities that come with being an adult? I have, and I've even been that adult that needed to act more like my chronological age. So what are some ways we can determine where we are chronologically versus mentally and emotionally? Well, number one, you can ask those closest to you to honestly tell you if they think your mental and emotional capacities don't necessarily match your chronological age. This will only work, though, if your inner circle doesn't have a bunch of yes people in it, Uh, you know, a bunch of people who aren't willing to challenge you or who won't be completely honest with you. Number two, you can ask your mentors or those who are older than you or more seasoned in life than you. Oftentimes, because they've gone before you, you know, they can see what you cannot see or they can see pitfalls that you might be facing if you don't make some constructive and positive changes in your life. Number three, you can read books on the subject or seek evaluation from, you know, a professional counselor. However you do it. It is important to do self-evaluation and evolutionary work so we can enjoy all of the seasons of our lives in appropriate ways. Otherwise, you risk potentially ruining relationships and opportunities by not acting your chronological age or behaving appropriately for your age. It is not to say that we, you know, can't enjoy life and be youthful at heart, but life is so much better, so much richer and more meaningful if we do the work and overcome or work through our trauma so we don't get stuck in time and we never move on from that place of injury. Here are some examples I can think of, of, you know, the negatives of not acting your chronological age. Number one. A person who grew up in an alcoholic home, you know, could be trauma, would be obviously traumatized by that experience and and might grow up to use alcohol as a coping mechanism that would potentially ruin their health and future relationships. Number two, an adult who never grew out of the toddler tantrum stage and is now an adult bullying and manipulating everyone around them to try to get their way with them. In this case, what might have worked in childhood is detrimental in adulthood. Not to mention how silly an adult looks throwing a temper tantrum. Number three, an adult who doesn't pay bills and just isn't responsible, you know, would lose their home and and, and, and other things because of it. Number four, a child who is, you know, age 10, but acts age two, 
will have difficulty making and keeping friends because his or her peers will likely reject him or her. Number five, an adult child who refuses to grow up and take responsibility and never leaves his parents' home. I'm sure you can figure out the potential negative impact of that example. Number six, a parent who refuses to parent, teach, guide, and discipline their children because they're still acting like a kid. The impact on the kids will likely be devastating. I hope you get my point here. You see, every action has a reaction because we don't live in a world by ourselves. We are not islands unto ourselves. What we do, decisions we make, and how we behave affects those around us. So not behaving appropriately chronologically, you know, it's like wearing a winter coat during summer or a summer coat during winter. The first will cause you to overheat and the the latter will cause you to freeze. Neither is good. Children who aren't taught how to share or be friendly and so on will grow up to have difficulty making and keeping friends. Social skills and norms have to be taught in childhood during the appropriate age and developmental stage and well before adulthood. It is appropriate for children to act like children, but it's inappropriate for adults in most situations to act like children, just like it's inappropriate for children to act like adults. We are all given a time and a space to be and act a certain age and to enjoy all that comes with that stage of life. It's like childhood is the foundation of a house. As you get older, you're building on that foundation until the whole house is complete. If you skip the foundation or start with the attic and then try to establish a foundation, it it, it simply won't work. Parents and every member of of a child's village should understand chronological versus mental and emotional aging so we can help children who struggle to get to where they should be. But once you are an adult, you should be ready to move on from childhood or at least be willing to do the work to act according to your chronological age. There's a quote, we age not by holding on to youth, but by letting ourselves grow and holding on to any youthful parts that remain. There's a scripture in 1 Corinthians that says, When I was a child, I behaved like a child. I spoke like a child, and I thought like a child. But when I became an adult, I put away childish things. I put the ways of childhood behind me. Basically, the concept, you know, that when you get older, uh, you get wiser is not necessarily true. You don't automatically gain wisdom because you're a number older than last year. You gain wisdom from doing self-work and evaluation personally and interpersonally. The Bible says we gain wisdom by asking God for it, who will freely give it to us if we ask. Essentially, we are all on this earth learning and growing. How we apply what we learn affects our lives and it affects everyone else's. In school, you know, we, we used to practice what's called cooperative learning. That should really be the model for life, Uh, all of us learning and growing together. I really think all people should have to take what's called the Hippocratic Oath in the medical field, and that is essentially to do no harm. We should do our very best to live and grow in ways that we do no harm to ourselves or to others. One way to ensure no harm is to act appropriately and according to your age. There's another quote, in youth we learn. In age, we understand. As we grow emotionally and mentally, we understand why it is so important to act age appropriately and how what we do affects others. Now, assuming there's nothing like a neurological problem or some type of physical or mental disability preventing you from acting according to your chronological age, you have the capacity to be self-aware and committed to personal growth and evolution. But you have to be honest with yourself and be willing to receive constructive criticism from safe and trusted sources for that to happen. Finally, I say, be youthful, enjoy your life, but find a way to do it in age appropriate ways so others don't have to be negatively affected by your trauma or a misappropriation of your chronological age. Bye for now. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Try Again with Monique. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to leave a review wherever you are listening. Please also remember to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new episodes are available. New episodes will be posted weekly. Please also like and follow us on Facebook. Try Again with Monique is a production of GM Associates released under Creative Common Attribution, Non-Commercial, No Derivatives, 4.0.
4.0 international license. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique.